Hey, welcome back to the Walter Bosley channel. Here we are. It is the first week of the month, and you know what that means. That means it's time for a California episode with our friend Todd Wood. Now, before we get started, I want to um, uh, fess up to you guys. I may be a little distracted because Malia's cooking something in the kitchen that's just, it, it's just mind-boggling how good it smells. So you you cannot blame me or fault me for, for being distracted because right now it smells heavenly in this studio. Believe me. Oh, oh, the magic of garlic, onions, and other things being mixed together. So, you know, you'll have to pardon me if I seem uh, distracted over that. So welcome back uh, again. Uh, if you're new here, first of all, thank you for being here. We're always getting new subscribers and um, California is a regular feature that we do. First week of the month is always dedicated to having Todd come on here and talk about serial killer cases that all have a connection to the state of California um, in all its weirdness throughout its you know, particularly uh, mid to late 20th century and early 21st century uh, crime history. Um, it, it, it's really astonishing um, how, you know, how that is so for one state. But California is a big state with um, some big urban areas and, and all the areas in between. So naturally, we're going to get more than our share of bad people, serial killers, cultists, and the like. So if you're new and you're wondering what California is, that's what it is. Now go back. If you like tonight, go back over the last, um, I, we've been doing this over a year, talking with Todd about this. Go back and look at all the previous uh, California episodes, and I think you'll really like them. And uh, we're glad to have you here. So welcome. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring Todd onto the stage, and there he is, Todd Wood. Hey, Todd. Hello. I'm so, so honored to be here. Oh, hey, we're honored to have you here. Hey, do me a favor. Stand up for a moment so that everybody can see your shirt. There we yeah. go. There's the man. Russ, Russ Cole. Cole. All right. All I right. need to thank Walter and Malia for that as a birthday present to me. Uh, hey, hey, yeah. you're a very, very generous man. We've got we've got um, uh, two gremlin figures that we've got from Todd, uh, a little gizmo and, and the other one. And plus the the, the uh, what's that strange what? What's that show? Stranger Things. Stranger Things, yeah. 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 Um, that there. And like I said, we're going to have more of the figures up that uh, various viewers have sent and donated and uh, gifted us over the years. That's why the shelf is there, so we can bring back all that, uh, all that fun stuff that many of you have been missing. And for those who are wondering, and they are out there, why Todd and I are wearing these uh, glasses, well, if you go back, if you go back and watch the previous Californias, um, you'll hear us talk about the legendary movie producer, Bob Evans, Robert Evans, who produced Chinatown and all sorts of other films. And uh, he's got a connection um, through what's called the Cotton Club Murders. Google it, Wikipedia, it, look it up yourself. But we do talk about it in a past episode. And, um, you know, these are our Bob Evans glasses. Hey, so most. Yeah. Hey, Bubby. Yeah. So um, just a little context for the newbies whom we're glad to have. I need to make sure I always welcome back our regulars, but also the newbies. So uh, remember, folks, um, when we open it up for questions, that's when we'll be paying attention to what's being said in the live chat. OK, so if you have questions or comments, hold them until we open it up for questions. So, uh, Todd? Yeah. Let's jump right in. Tell us about what uh, tonight is about. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about the satanic underground. Now, mm -hmm. I think it's important that we uh, 
address the elephant in the room. Yes. What is Satanism? Mm -hmm. What do we mean by Satanic? Is Satanism just dudes worshiping at a, at a statue of Baphomet? Or are these atheists putting on a floor show to mock God? More times than not, you'll find that it's just atheist uh, mocking God and role playing to an extent. And what do we mean by underground? Well, we mean a network. In fact, we're going beyond California tonight. We're going to be going to places like Seattle, Washington, Chicago, Illinois, Florida, New Orleans. We're going to go all over the place. We're, going to, we're talking about a vast criminal network operating from the 1960s all the way up into the 90s and probably still going today. So where do we start? Well, we, we start perhaps at, back in California. We start with the Manson family. And the Manson family, as you know, had connections to different biker gangs, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. drugs, right? And those biker gangs would traffic drugs. Prostitution, right? Through the mm -hmm. biker gangs and the Manson family. We're yeah. talking about the Gypsy Jokers, the Straight Satan, Satan Slaves, all those, the Hell's Angels. Well, didn't didn't Charlie start out as a pimp? Yes, he did. And then that led to the other things. Right, right. In fact, in, in court, he he, I believe he said, "I'm not a, I'm not a murderer. I'm a I'm a pimp and a thief." Right, mm -hmm. and uh, those that cross pollination is what kind of creates the network. Manson in San Francisco being influenced by the process church of the final judgment. Mm -hmm. And then later on, which uh, a group we've talked about a lot here on this channel, the 4P cult. Mm -hmm. Now, anyone who recalls the episode we've done on the 4P cult, towards the end of um, the 4P cult section of Michael Newton's book, Raising Hell, Law enforcement, he states that law enforcement professionals think that this group was in, uh, involved in human trafficking, kidnapping, drug trafficking, prostitution, human sacrifice, murder for hire, you name it. Those are all the facets of this sort of satanic underground. Now, why do we call it the satanic underground? Well, that actually comes from a serial killer himself. Mm -hmm. A serial killer by the name of Gary, uh, Gerard Schaefer. And writing his, uh, I guess his ex-girlfriend, or maybe they were married, Sandra London, threatening her and threatening her kid. He talks about the satanic network. And I believe it's the, the book is called Fatal Visions. Mm -hmm. And you can probably find excerpts from it online if you look hard enough. Uh, in fact, I sent Walter a uh, a clip of old Gerard talking about his relationship with Ted Bundy. Yeah, yeah. This man, Gerard, Gerard, uh, Gerard's a monster. Yeah, he, he's he's a creepy, eerie kind of psycho. Oh yeah, you know, um, it, it, he he's as creepy as an uh, an evil psychotic clown without having to have the makeup on. Right, right. So. To go back to California, let's look at all the connections that we have. And just in mm -hmm. California, we have the Manson family. Mm -hmm. okay? And we got uh, biker gangs. And we got this one biker gang called the Brotherhood. And we got San Francisco, which is a seven by seven mile little city. So the cross pollination between all these groups in San Francisco can only lead to, to something horrible, basically, at that point in the 1960s. Yeah. The Process Church, the uh, the Manson family, the Four P cult, right? The Zodiac, the Zodiac, Thomas Creech, the Church of Satan, right? All these things. Now, when we, uh, so I'm gonna kind of try and um, in this episode, Walter, if it's okay with you, I, I kind of want to give a little bit of an overview of sort of each cult. Do it. Yeah. Okay, so anyone who's familiar with the Process Church, the Process Church is sort of a splinter group 
off of the um, Church of Scientology. They kind of split off and started doing their own thing. Robert Moore and Marianne de Grimston. The later is Robert de Grimston and Marianne de Grimston. Uh, they married and uh, they transferred their operations. So they first went to Nassau, Nassau County, Nassau, I'm not Nassau County, Nassau in the uh, Bahamas. That's mm -hmm. important to know because that's actually where the mafia launders are laundered their money. After that, they went to a place called Stool, Mexico, X-T-U-L. It's pronounced Stool. From there, they went to New Orleans. And from New Orleans, they 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 got into, uh, they were incorporated as the Process Church of the Final Judgment. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were incorporated by a guy named Tommy, Thomas Jude Bomber. Now, Thomas Jude Bomber worked out of uh, Guy Bannister's office, ex-FBI agent Guy Bannister's office, who was sort of a handler to Harvey Lee Oswald. Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald, yeah, in the JFK uh, assassination milieu. Yeah, I, I don't know why I call him Harvey Lee. Lee Harvey Oswald. They know uh, who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, from there, they go to San Francisco, and they live, they live less than a minute away. Where they move in San Francisco, they, they live less than a minute away from Charles Manson and the Manson family. So mm -hmm. there is that cross-pollination. Right there. There's the beginnings of, of this sort of what I call the, the spider web. And this spider web, it stretches all across the country. It even goes into Europe. It goes all over the place. So from there, uh, the, the, the Process Church connects with the Manson family. The, the Manson family and the Process Church move to L.A. Right? Obviously, uh, Soon after the RFK assassination, which the Process Church may be implicated in in some way, maybe a, a, perhaps a connection to Sirhan Sirhan mm -hmm. um, and the Tates, uh, they 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 could get skedaddle. They get out of uh, they get out of Los Angeles, right? But the Manson family stay, and obviously we all know about the Tate LaBianca murders. Um, interestingly enough, so that kind of leads to Ed Sanders. Ed Sanders, who's you know folk singer, and he starts investigating the case, and he actually gets hired as a sort of detective, um, mm -hmm. an investigator, by Paul Fitzgerald, the person who was in, in charge of the defense. Okay. Now... Uh, the defense of the Manson family, some of the girls involved in the Tate LaBianca murder. Now, the interesting thing is that um, in the course of his investigations, he stumbles across police reports and depositions of a cult operating in the Santa Cruz Mountains. This cult is known as the 4P or 4Pi movement. Um and uh, supposedly they're a splinter group off of the process church of the final judgment. Although I personally don't like the term splinter group because that basically implies that a member is actually in that group. I, mm -hmm. I, I like, um, I like the term affiliated. Yeah. That's a good better. term for that. Now uh, moving into the 1970s, what we see is a ritual occult, um, uh, killing spree basically okay. now before i can get into that a little more background on the pro uh the four pie cult now the four pie cult is run by someone by the name of the grand chingon there's a right. lot of speculations on who the grand chingon is is it ronald starks the person who took over uh sort of a the accounting side of the brotherhood of eternal love Right, who had his basically had his hands full with the Weather Underground in the 1970s, mm. or is it this other guy, William J. Bryan, who's obviously implicated in the Sirhan Sirhan uh, MK Ultra stuff? Mm -hmm. Anybody who doesn't know what MK Ultra is, MK Ultra is the government's program into experimentation on to mind mind control to uh, for many beneficial reasons for for to them. 
For right. one, they wanted to try and make it assassin killers. Right. Two, they wanted to uh, try and make a truth serum, right? And so right. on and so forth and all that. Um, so this Grand Chingon, according to uh, depositions, interviews, uh, police reports, basically ordered his followers to go out and kill. Doesn't matter who the victim is, just kill. Right. So from this, we get we go through the 1970s, you know, starting with the f- February 21st with the first Goleta Beach murders of um, John Hood and uh, Sandra Garcia, right? Yeah. Uh, very sort of a uh, nothing was stolen. There was no rape, no sexual assault or anything like that. It was just killing for the sake of killing. Then from there, we go into a uh, the on June 2nd. No, no, no. I, wait, wait. Let me back up. In April, we have the, the murder of Robert Salem committed by Stanley Dean Baker, right? A known mm-hmm. Satanist, right. right? With ties to the 4P, 4P cult and ties to a cult in uh, Wyoming. So he writes all sorts of things on the wall after killing this this sort of lighting uh, director type of guy, lighting designer, uh, yeah. like Zodiac, right? Mm-hmm. Satan saves. He even writes uh, Egyptian, um, he sort of draws Egyptian uh, symbols on the wall. Hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs with the victim's yeah. blood. Um, after that, June 2nd, we go into the axe murder of a uh, service station attendant. Mm-hmm. Day after that, we go into the murder of Florence Nancy Brown by uh, um, this sort of subgroup of the 4P. You know, that one of one of those little groups that uh, a bunch of little groups make up the larger group. Right. Um, a cell. Maybe a cell. cell a the larger satanic group. cell. I like that. We're gonna say, there is, I say, you know, all these satanic cells, right? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, of course, they killed Florence Nancy Brown in an occult ritual way. They, uh, you know, cut the woman's heart out, cut her arm out, off, removed one of her lungs, uh, part, you know, there's some cannibalism involved. The heart was used in a occult satanic ritual. Right. From there, from there, just one month later, we have Stanley Baker again, right? On uh, July 13th, in, where he gets uh, involved in a hit and run, him and his friend, and uh, they, um, they get caught. He... Police pull out a finger and he says, I'm a cannibal. I have a, pro- I have a problem. I'm a cannibal, right? He yeah. claims he murdered and removed the heart of a young man in uh, Montana near the Yellowstone River. Mm-hmm. Right? Later, the police found him and so forth. Now, the interesting thing here is uh, so we keep going, right? And right. this is where sort of everything sort of connects. Because we, we've talked about John Lindley Frazier before. Mm-hmm. Now I told you about Stephen Hunt. He killed Florence Nancy Brown. He and he used the he removed her heart, and him and his little cell used it in an occult ritual. That occult ritual is they drove the heart to Santa Cruz. Okay, right? Santa Cruz. They burn the heart. They burn the car. A, a lot in, in the same sort of fashion that supposedly John Lindley Frazier and his three associates, um, so, you know, supposed three associates, uh, burn the, burn the, um, the Oda's station wagon. Mm-hmm. Now for people who don't know who the Oda family is, the Oda family is a, was a wealthy, well, to, sort of well to do family. The father was, I think his name was Victor Oda, an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz. And he uh, he prescribed some glasses to somebody, and those glasses were found at the crime scene at the Tate residence. Right. So things come are starting to connect and come full circle. Um. What did Oda have any uh, military background? Yes, he was Air Force. There you go, folks. Remember, um, I've said it before. Said it recently. Um, when MK Ultra 
was being taught to the U.S. military in the 1950s. The United States Air Force was notably the one branch that really got turned on by MKUltra the most, so much so that the Air Force started its own independent MKUltra program in the late 50s. And guess what? To this day, unlike even the CIA, the Air Force has not had to come clean before Congress and the American people as to what they've been doing with MK Ultra now since the late 50s, which is what, 60 something years. Yeah. Yeah. So here you have a guy in the middle of all this stuff, this weird stuff, and he's got U.S. Air Force connections and he's not the only one. Go ahead. Todd. Right. So John Lindley Frazier and uh, supposedly his three associates, they kill the family and, uh, you know, they, they leave a, a sort of note under the windshield wiper um, claiming to be, you know, uh, named like his little grouper named after the, the tarot cards for tarot mm-hmm. cards. And like, um, he de- basically declares like world war three. Uh, he's very much into sort of like reincarnation and all these sort of things, but that's sort of your full circle from Manson to Hun, Hun driving the heart up to Santa Cruz out of all places. He could have driven it to Canada. Right. And then, you know, well, they found him in a farmhouse, like they found a uh, Hun, Stephen Hun, in yeah. the farmhouse. Now, uh, anybody who's read the 2002 edition of The Family, Stephen Hun is the gentleman in chapter 15 um, who says he was made to take war pills, reds. And a lot of the information that we have about the 4P cult comes from Stephen Hun. And possibly this guy named um, uh, Herman Taylor who turned state evidence. I, I just want to real quick note that um, this guy talking about World War III, and of course, Charlie was always talking about the apocalyptic war that was going to come. Mm-hmm. This this apocalyptic theme seemed to run through um, the minds of these guys, or at least the threads yeah. of what they were doing. Right, right. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just went along with the times. You had the Cold War, you had Vietnam War. Um, yeah. So... Uh, to get back to where I was now, we've gone from Southern California to Northern California, Santa Cruz, which is right beneath, uh, right beneath, um, San Francisco. Yeah. Right? Just right, right down the highway South of San Jose. Mm-hmm. Now, um, another interesting aspect of this. And so the spider's web is starting to spread mm-hmm. is, um, Ted Bundy. Mm-hmm. Now, to, get, to go back to San Francisco in 1968, you had the Process Church, you had Charles Manson, but in the summer, you also had Ted Bundy, mm-hmm. another serial killer for people who, who, who are unaware. Mm-hmm. Now, Ted was at Stanford University studying the Chinese language. Um, the question is, who else did he run into? Why he while he was in San Francisco, by any chance, did he get sick and go to the Haida Ashbury Free Clinic? Hmm? Did he run into Jolly and West? Did he go to the Church of Satan? Right. So. Well, and, and, and did not did not his roommate um, was not his roommate also in the Air Force. Uh, that was that was when he moved to Utah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. His Utah roommate was OSI. Yeah, specifically OSI. My old outfit that I was in. Go ahead. Sorry. Now, the interesting thing about Ted, now we're moving from San Francisco to Washington State. Mm-hmm. Now, with Ted, the, there's a lot, there's, there's at least two to three other serial killers who claimed that he they were out killing with Ted, sort right. of a, a tag team duo type of type of deal. One of those serial killers was Thomas Creech. Mm-hmm. Thomas Creech was a hitman and a serial killer. Um, Thomas Creech, who who was uh, went uh, committed to ch- how do you say that chili cloth? Ch- mental- Chillicothe. Chillicothe. Yeah. Mental hospital, the same place that Manson attended, and it's, it's in Ohio. Williams. Yeah, in Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he in 1966, after he was discharged from the army, he actually 
started hanging out with the Hells Angels, although he never became a member himself. And um, he got involved with the Church of Satan, developing a court. Um, I don't know. Walter, did you post the uh, the, the sources in the, the description box? Oh, not yet, but we will. Okay, so I should tell you guys, Cav Death, um, I don't mean to just stop everything and go over here, but... Well, it, it's not... It's, 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 always, it's always a good idea to state that in the show, even though we're going to post it later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go right ahead. Um, so this is according to um, a uh, article that was written in the 1970s called The All-American Death Angel. Um, so... Thomas Creech, he gets involved with the Church of Satan. He develops sort of a respect for Satanism. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes on his own sort of killing spree. He kills people in California, kills people in Ohio, uh, kills people all over the place. And, and just so everybody knows, I'm not going to be getting into the details of the cr individual crimes. I'm just going to be talking about the connections. Mm -hmm. just, just if anybody's you know waiting for that. Um, and so Thomas, he, he, uh, he, you know, he finally gets arrested and, um, he tells investigators that he, or he identified, uh, uh, or he, that he was involved with a satanic cult in Washington state and the satanic cult, they would pick up women, hitchhikers, things like that. Give them P PCP walks them down to the day basement and 20, 30 people would just start hacking and slashing. And um, he identified that uh, one of those people was Ted Bundy. Oh, wow. In this sort of satanic, wait, wait, satanic 20, cult. 20 to 30 people. Yeah. Would, would participate in the slaughter. Mm -hmm. If memory victim. serves, it, it it you know it, it may be a little less than that, but I think it was it was quite a bit, quite a bit of people. Yeah, that's wow, uh, that's mm -hmm. troubling to say the least. Mm -hmm. Right now, the interesting thing after that is the other serial killer who uh, lived in Oregon, right? Mm -hmm. His, uh, who claimed to have been killing with Ted Bundy. His name is Stanley Benson. And Stanley mm -hmm. Benson is also a Satanist and may have mm -hmm. been involved with that group okay. as well. Now, moving sort of moving on for a second into the um, Green River Killer, who is also mm -hmm. in Washington State. While the investigation for the Green River Killer was going on and Anne Rule was writing her book, Anne Rule, who was a close associate of Ted Bundy's, by the way, worked at the mm -hmm. suicide hotline prevention place with Ted Bundy. Um, and rule received a letter from a gentleman who claimed to be a Watergate lawyer, um, telling her that, uh, he had witnessed satanic human sacrifices. Whoa. In the woods of Washington state. Now, when you say a Watergate lawyer for the um, for the prosecution or for the defense of President Nixon, I think it was. I think it was for the defense. Uh, I I'll have to go back and ch double check that, but I think it was Folks, for the defense. I want to remind you that Richard Nixon was a California, uh, re you know, native, and mm -hmm. um, I I believe he was a California politician when he got onto the presidential level correct or had he i i don't remember that but but richard nixon was california native so mm -hmm. uh, you know you got to wonder a guy who was in circles legal circles protecting nixon and he says he witnessed this kind of thing and mm -hmm. you know the the president he happens to be de part of defending is a california guy so mm -hmm. uh, you know you got to wonder and then when he retired well when he resigned he came out here to san clemente Mm -hmm. you know, and spent the rest of his days. And, uh, you know, you got to wonder, how did this lawyer witness this stuff? You know, mm -hmm. did does he say? Go ahead. Well, because he, he was in the area at the time, I guess he went hiking, okay. but he claimed to have an audio tape of of the events that took place. And he offered to oh, send wow. it to Anne Rule. Anne Rule assumed he was just some sort of kook until she read the book, 
uh, the, all the president's men. Mm -hmm. And um, she realized uh, that the Watergate lawyer, she called him the Watergate lawyer with the weird name. The only one having a weird name was Eggle Krogh. Mm -hmm. okay. Every other name was sort of normal. Yeah. Um, that's, the, I think that's very interesting because, yeah. um, well, one, according to Thomas Creech in the testimony he gave, they would do their little human sacrifices in a basement in a, from, in a house, sort of in a suburb of, uh, Seattle, but they would also do it around, uh, Washington. I, th I think it's called Washington Lake, the okay. Washington river or something like that. I'm kind of unfamiliar with that area. Right. Right. But it's all right there in the source material on cab def. If you go to the Thomas Creech section or just type in Creech in the search bar and it should pipe pop, pop up once you're on the cab def website. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a question. I have a question about, sure. um, have you, has your research turned up anything about, um, the, um, either the sexuality of or the sex lives or activities of these killers who eventually got involved with the, with the cult stuff. I, I have a reason for asking that. Yeah. That, oh, okay. Yeah. Because I mean, they, 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 they're all about the sort of do as thy will type of thing. Right. Okay. Because yeah. And, yeah. and here's what fits with this. Um, several, well, sources that had been inside this world. Mm -hmm. this cult world, they have come out and um, said that uh, these kind of cults will start their recruitment vetting in the swinger culture. Now, mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know the swinger culture, that's couples who go to, you know, they spend weekends at retreats <coughs> or parties where they trade sex partners. And mm -hmm. what they'll do is, what these former cult members say is, they will vet um you know, they'll watch everybody in this group and there's certain ones that they think they can influence or show a, a predilection for whatever um, or a particular enthusiasm for this. And then the next stage will be uh, drugs very often. It's like, hey, if the sex excites you, you should have sex on this drug or with these drugs. And then if they can get them into that, then they say, hey, if you think the sex stuff is exciting and you think it's the sex on drugs is exciting. You got to get into this special little group we have where they add, and this is where they add magic and ritualistic magic. And yeah. then once they get them into that, you know, that, I mean, of course they get blackmail information on them, but uh, the ones that complete the recruitment, you know, process um, then are tasked with doing special things that relate to rituals mm -hmm. and we can right. assume, and it was implied ritual slayings and murders. So I'm wondering, do any of these killers that you're talking about, um, do they have a known history say with either, you know, we know Manson was a pimp. So there's the sex part, the sex right. lure. Um, we know they took, did, did uh, Manson, you know, kind of spread around the LSD and stuff, right. Without doing it himself. Yeah, Manson spread around the LSD. The Brotherhood of Eternal Love spread around the LSD. And uh, sex was a gateway activity, too. Right. Right. That and word games. Ah. Okay. Right. Yeah. He talking like sort of circles. Oh, and, yeah. Like, yeah. He could, yeah. He could like, sort of disarm women and stuff like that. But don't forget also it, the CIA. It mm -hmm. was in San Francisco in 68 as well at their safe house in, in the Telegraph Hill. Right, right. I mean, they're in where, they, stuff. where yeah. they would have the uh, aerosol LSD. Right. And I, so I, I think you're right about the swingers clubs, but it was also S&M clubs. Oh, yes. Bondage yeah, clubs. Go. And I believe George White, uh, who was and his wife, were, who are also swingers, but they are also into the sort of uh, S&M type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and don't you don't want to ever cross paths with George White. George White is a, a bad, bad yeah. man. Yeah. You've talked about him in, in past episodes. Yeah. But back back to Ted, you know, yeah. um, Get back to Ted Bundy. So we have this connection between um, Thomas Creech and uh, also um, 
Stanley Benson, who claims mm -hmm. he had killed like 50 women, although I think he was only convicted of, of maybe killing one woman because uh, they could mm -hmm. probably couldn't find the bodies or they're so badly decomposed right. that there's you know, nothing there. Um, I would highly recommend listening to George uh, talk about like – it, in the hand of death episode talk about mm -hmm. ted bundy on on the program to kill uh youtube channel i think it's yeah. like 319 for for anybody who's interested i mean his research into this is pretty great pretty great uh and a big shout out to him and patrick from program to kill um but so moving moving along Yes. Uh, so, like I said, Eggle Crow, the Watergate lawyer, and then we get to, um, we get to Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Chicago is a very interesting place, mm -hmm. um, because you have, uh, you had the Weather Underground yeah. in Chicago, and the Weather Underground, but going to California and trying to merge with the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. Right. And the person running the books for the Brotherhood of Eternal Love was a guy named uh, Ronald Starks. Mm -hmm. And Ronald Starks is the person, one of the people theorized to be the Grand Chingon of the four P okay. four Pi cult. Now, um, now, was there a presence of uh, satanic activity that was known to be um, in the Chicago area? Yes, there was. Hmm. Yes, there was. There's there was a gentleman by the name of um john wayne gacy oh yes the clown mm -hmm. now the here's where things anybody who's listened to uh and one of the sources for tonight's show is the clown and the candy man on audible i highly mm -hmm. recommend listening to every episode there's only like nine but uh, there's some really good information there um so uh basically the, the, this network, this network is spreading. The spider web is spreading. Right. You have John Wayne Gacy, right? But John Wayne Gacy claims to be just simply a copycat killer of a guy named Dean Coral. Dean Coral okay. in Texas is also known as the Candyman. Okay. Right now, Dean Coral, when when he was killed, well, he was killed by the person who's sort of his his partner, his underling in sort of this this uh, his killing spree. Right. But when police were investigating, they, they found that some of his victims possibly were male prostitutes, underage male prostitutes coming from a pimp by the name of John David Norman. OK. Now, John David Norman was uh, he was arrested multiple times. Uh, he, he himself was a pedophile, but uh, he. So he got you know locked up a bunch, and when he was locked up for one of those times, he came he met someone and uh, became friends with a guy named Phil Pulaski. Hopefully, okay. I'm saying that right. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Don't don't yell the yeah. Uh, you guys in the chat, don't get on to me if I'm not saying that right. Um, now, Phil Pulaski is uh, Phil Pulaski gets out after and uh, they, they, they sort of start this thing called the Delta program. And it's sort of the same old thing, male prostitution and stuff like that. And sending out these underage boys to these high ranking figures in Washington. Does, does this, could this have any connection to the Franklin scandal? Quite possibly. Again, this, I mean, this spider web connects to everything. Okay. It connects to it, literally like you, you can find a connection. Now, all of these guys, they have their connections, their connection to the spider web. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any indication of who might actually have been behind the satanic Satanist movement of this right. era? You know, right. uh, so, we, we have uh, Colonel Aquino, as we know, who was a Satanist yeah. and also, U.S. Army Special Forces and Intel. Right, right. Well, uh, we, we don't know. We, that's sort of the that's sort of the thing about the network. The network's like Kaiser Sosa. We we just don't uh, know. It's so vast, right? It's it's not like we have a, a Je Jeffrey Epstein or a Jillian right. Maxwell in this situation, who also may be involved, as far as yeah. we know. But yeah. Phil Plasky gets out of jail. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mr. Norman, he's still in jail, and he goes to work for a certain somebody by the name of. 
John Wayne Gacy. Oh, for his right. construction company? For his or, construction or extensively company. Extensively for the construction company. Go ahead. Right. Uh, thus, the, 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 the theory and the possibility that John Wayne Gacy was not working alone and he probably didn't kill all the victims. He killed, killed some of them for sure, but not, not all. Now, there was another young man working for John Wayne Gacy, and that person's name is Robin Geck. Okay. Robin Geck was part of the Ripper crew. Oh. The Ripper crew, yes, they were a bit sort of a satanic cult and operating in the 1980s. Okay. Yeah. Robin Geck was very highly into Satanism. Now, now, when you say, uh, you know, the, they were this this cult was a satanic mm -hmm. cult. Mm -hmm. Did they have any known connections to who we popularly think of? I mentioned Aquino before. Then there's of course Anton Lavey, who many consider to be kind of a a a cartoonish uh, satanist, um, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but, uh, did this Ripper cult have any connections to either one of those two guys or their associates? No. Um, I mean, it's very possible that they did, mm -hmm. but we don't have any records or documentation or proof that they were. Okay. I mean, there was a lot of intermingling. So it's very, again, it's, it's very possible. Yeah, because there's the so-called theatrical Satanism, mm -hmm. which was just a big counterculture show. Right. But then there's the real dark stuff. And what right. you're talking about, you know, just for the, the viewers, what you're talking about is the truly dark. Yes. Um, real dark uh, right. stuff, uh, like Matamoros cult type stuff, you know. Right. Met well, th there you go. There's an another connection to Chicago. Oh. Because... There's a difference between a small group, a satanic cell, and a major network, mm -hmm. right? So part of that small group in Metamoros were the Hernandez brothers, and they were known drug traffickers, right? Okay, right. But they they would when they would traffic drugs, they would traffic drugs into a larger network connected to the Chicago mafia. Oh, okay. So the mafia. Yes. You know, had their uses for guys like this, probably. Oh, for sure. And the, there was guys in the, some of these organized crime outfits. Of course, the network yeah. itself is an organized crime network um, that sure. you know, were, were Satanist. You know, the, right. not all of them were Catholic. You know, there was different sorts of organized crime groups out there. Um uh, there's a lots of ums tonight. Sorry, I, 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 I would admit, well, we're going to be going to questions in two minutes. So okay. um, what we want to do is kind of bring it back and, and tie that uh, satanic ribbon around it to, to really, um, you know, emphasize that, yeah. you know, the, 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 the saintness uh, part of this and its importance. But I want to say, you're talking about the mafia and, you know, when you think of, the Godfather pictures, remember the Corleones didn't want to get involved with drugs, but other families wanted to get involved with drugs. You could almost look at it as there's probably a bunch of traditional mafia guys that wanted no part of these Satanist wackos. Oh, for sure. For sure. But then you had your other ones who, hey, they could be useful or maybe some of the you know sadistic types. Remember, yeah. like uh, Joe Gallo was a crazy sadistic type, you know. Yeah, George uh, Nash. You know, yeah, guys like them, you know, I'll, I'll bet this Satanist connection stuff uh, to them was kind of a thrill. Yeah, um, for sure. For sure. Now, the, the Robin, he, he spent some time in Florida. He, he sort of disappeared for a bit and then came back. Mm -hmm. And that's where things sort of really got amped up. But another mm -hmm. person who has connections to the Chicago Mafia is a guy yeah. by the name of um, Mad Dog McKenna. Kenneth Mad Dog McKenna. Oh, yes. Yeah. Kenneth Mad Dog McKenna, his mother was a prostitute being run by the Chicago Mafia. And his first job was running policy notes for the Chicago Mafia. Okay. Now, anybody who doesn't know what policy notes are, policy notes are the sort of the proto lottery. Uh, they were the lottery. It was the lottery before the lottery. Okay. Um, that's the best way to know it. Now, Kenneth Mad Dog McKenna just sort of the wrap the, uh, this bow around, you know, um, had a relationship with Ted Bundy. Okay. What kind of relationship? 
Well, Ted thought that his capture was inevitable. Okay. And that he needed to uh, learn metaphys- use metaphysical forces. According oh. to uh, Kenneth Mad Dog McKenna in Fatal Visions and in the, the Australian uh, criminology uh, book, uh, I, I think it's just called Australian Crim- Criminology or something like that. Um, he goes, Ted Bundy seeks out Kenneth Mad Dog McKenna, who is in Florida. Mm-hmm. Now, Kenneth uh, agreed to teach him. Kenneth uh, Kenneth Mad Dog McKenna was also a fourth prince of hell of the Hand of Death. Oh, boy. So their so Hand of Death, pop- they're handing out titles for this stuff. Right, right. Well, it's just sort of like a lieutenant, right? You just replace lieutenant with fourth prince of hell. Right? Like, as if it were a gang or a motorcycle gang or something like that. Did any of these guys, I have this question, and then we got to jump over to, to questions from the live chat. Sure. Um, did any of these guys, um, have any interest in, or any known connections in, uh, uh, UFO groups or paranormal groups or anything like that? It's very possible. It's very, very possible. I mean, um, I haven't really come across that. I know that there are connections between these guys in like aerospace, Mm -hmm. for instance, Lawrence Bittaker was a mechanic for Lockheed Martin. Lawrence Binnaker was one of the toolbox killers. And then um, Patrick Kearney, who claims he had gone to uh, the military school in Big Sur and was actually in the same military language class as Lee Harvey Oswald, was hired oh, okay. as an electrical engineer for uh, Hughes Aircraft. Wow. I'm wow. sure those connections are there. You just have to keep digging for them. Sure, sure. Uh, Malia, who's joined us in the studio, do you have any questions you'd like to add or ask Todd? Not right now. We're doing no. good. Okay. Okay. Great, great, great. Well, Todd, let's go to, um, questions from the live chat. Okay. And, um, remember folks, please put them in all caps, whether it's a question or a comment you want acknowledged. If you've asked it before now, ask it again, please, because it's real difficult to scroll up and find a question somebody asked. 35 minutes ago. So um, we'll, while we're waiting for a question to pop up, um, I just want to say that uh, with this satanic influence and connection, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I, I find it really interesting. It would be interesting to know if any of them were involved in the paranormal or with psychics, um, oh, you know, and, yeah, and well, UFOs ghost. and stuff like that. Ghost. Okay. Um, we do have a question. Red Cap Goblin, who I recognize the name, but um, I guess he hasn't heard us explain it multiple times before. Why are we wearing the same glasses? Uh, look up the producer, the film producer, Robert Evans, and look up the Cotton Club Murders and go back and watch previous episodes of California, and then you'll understand why we're wearing these glasses. Yeah. Uh, okay. That does, so that does remind me that. Uh, yes, Miss Jonaside, that's a great idea. We'll be making a playlist for California, along with some other exciting. Oh, things. okay, yeah, so good idea. Doing. Yeah, we need to do that. We because we, we are we do have some other things brewing for uh, that we've been talking with Todd and mm-hmm. and uh, when we're ready, you guys will find out what they are. But um, more California is coming, you know. So um, yeah. That's right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do that. It definitely. Um, Ryan Perella, Perea, Perella, however it's pronounced. Walter, can you give a name to the Air Force Mind Control Program? Uh, no, that's just it, Ryan. Um, the all the the historical sources on MK Ultra just say that the Air Force started its own independent program. Mm-hmm. They likely do not want that name of that program known. Yeah. Uh, I, I will tell you that it was embedded into the Aerospace Medicine Command of the United oh. States Air Force. Yeah. And, um, both under the Air- and, and, and the Psychiatric Division. I will right. tell you too that um, as an OSI agent, I remember being briefed on if there was any special services we wanted from U.S. Air Force psychiatrists 
All we had to do was request that. They would even do things like hypnosis. That was one of the first things we were told that they would do for us is mm -hmm. put someone under hypnosis. Now think about the connection between hypnosis and MK Ultra historically. Wow. Now imagine I'm an agent in the mid to late 90s. Imagine you know, 40 years after getting their hands on MK Ultra mm -hmm. and going into their own independent secret program, imagine right. how far they had taken hypnosis and things like that by then. And now that's been 25 years ago already. So, uh, but as yeah. far as the name of it, I, I don't know. And I was an OSI agent and I can't mm -hmm. tell you what the name of the Air Force MK Ultra program would be. So, now, I should, I should add to that the director of medical survival for the Air Force, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or one of them was William Joseph Bryan. William yes. Joseph Bryan, the guy who's uh, believed to have programmed Sirhan Sirhan, right? Now, yes. I, you know, Sirhan Sirhan has his own connections to the Process Church. He said he was infatu. It's said that he was infatuated, sort of, with the the occult, the British occult group. Uh, yeah, the process church. Yeah. So um, if I'm recalling my history correctly, which, by the way, I talk about in this book, this very thing you mentioned, I talk about uh, the MK Ultra history with the Air Force and also um, the, uh, the 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 medical survival issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the first guru of that for the Air Force was um, Hubertus Strughold. I think it was Strughold, but it was one of the. Operation Paperclip Nazi aviation medicine scientists yes. who really kicked off that medical survival right. program. I, I, I think William Joseph, he was first because the Air Force was that, that was 47, right? When it got started? Uh, yeah, it was sometime in the late 40s, yeah, going into the 50s. Yeah. It was part of the National Security Act, I, I, I believe. I think. Well, yeah, the Air Force was stood up independently from the U.S. Army I by think, the National Security Act of 47. I think, uh, I think that guy was first, and then William J. Bryan was second. Hey, looky here, we got a troll in here. How do we know you aren't a Manchurian <laughs> candidate, Walter? I don't know if that's a Who's, troll. What's the troll's name? <laughs> hi, hi. Hi, hi. I just want to be loved. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, hi. If you're not a troll, we're just having fun. But if you are, we're going to have even more fun at your expense. <laughs> anyway, we just like, we like to keep it fun here. Um, uh, you know, that's, uh, there you go. And you know what? Actually, here's the answer. Here's the proper answer to this question. Um, how do we know you aren't a Manchurian candidate, Walter? Well, hi, hi. You don't know, do you? <laughs> You don't know if I'm an OSI Air Force plant. Who knows? I could be. Uh-oh. I know I am. Bosley could have sinister intentions here. Anyway, just having a little fun. Thank you, Hi Hi, for that fodder for fun. We appreciate that. Uh, Rodney Stubbert, California, introduced him to the channel. Well, hey, Rodney, thank you. Hey, thank that, you so that, much, man. Uh, I'm sure several people have come to the channel because of this this series that we do, and we're going to be doing more of it. Okay, remember, folks, all caps, if you want me to answer the question or acknowledge the comment. Uh, let's see. We have from Olive Eisner. Is the Air Force the branch using synthetic telepathy and mind control? Are you familiar with it? Um, synthetic telepathy. I've never heard that phrase. I, Walter Bosley always admits when he doesn't know something, unlike, you know, some other um, uh, folks, you know, in the community. I, I like to be honest. If I don't know something, I'll tell you that I don't know it. I am not familiar with synthetic telepathy. Now, mind control. Uh, yes, I'm going to say that it is my opinion, both personally as a researcher, scholar, and professional, former special agent of the OSI and former professional in the U.S. national security, operational professional, I might add, in the U.S. national security community for 20 years. Um, I'm going to say, is the Air Force using such things as these mind control, these MK Ultra tools? Yes, I'm going to go on record saying, yes, I think that. That is my sincere um, position. Uh, hi, hi, had fun. Good. Thank you. Hi, hi. We're just having fun on you. <laughs> so um, let's see here. 
Okay, Todd, we've got Ryan Prella. RFK's murder scene had reports of a woman in a black and white polka dot dress, yes, right. who was with Sir Han. Any idea who this woman was with? Um, she apparently was with people. Do you have, in your yes. research, what do you have on that? Well, I mean, she was with someone who I think the description was he was wearing sort of a, a sw light sweater. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And I'm he, more vague on him than her. The polka dot dress, was, obviously. I think he was like, you know? uh, he looked like he was Middle Eastern or perhaps uh, Hispanic. Well, he could have um, been a, uh, a Palestinian, um, you, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. Sirhan. Was Sirhan Palestinian? He was Serbian. But I, I like what you're thinking with the Palestinian Serbian. because of Mahmoud Hinshari. Mahmoud Hinshari, Clay, if you're anybody who's read the book Nemesis, he said we should take out someone very important in the American political scene. Okay. And uh, okay. He, he had ties to Aristotle Onassis, who hated Robert Kennedy. Yeah. And he was sort of a master of disguise. And he played a bunch of different characters. So it definitely wouldn't surprise me if he, he played a character with the woman in the polka dot dress. Ah, could be, could be. Philip Blair, our good friend Philip Blair, he says, maybe they hid it from you two to keep you from, you too, to keep you from remembering the ultimate secrets. Oh, that'd be wild. What if they used MK Ultra on me at some point before, you know, they, they, you know, think about it. They send me TDY. I'm asleep in my hotel room. They slip in in the middle of the night after, you know, putting some type of sleepy gas in my hotel room. They do some kind of weird stuff. I wake up the next morning, none the wiser. Who knows? That, that's kind of, you know, a similar thing I think they did to my dad, seriously. Right. Well, wouldn't that. that be an interesting sort of story? Like, that's, it's sort of like Memento. Where right. Like, yeah. they, 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 they strip your mind of the ultimate secret, the ultimate answer, right? And so, like, you being an investigator, you're like, you slowly have to piece it, like, go through the investigation, piece it together just to get right. back what they had stolen. Right, right. To yeah. figure out, you know, what it was. Uh, Telegraphic says, uh, hearing about the Air Force MK Ultra makes me wonder how many MK Ultras, you know, are out there. Can we determine a speculative tally? Todd, I don't think we can. No, we can't because you also people. have to consider that corporations have their own intelligence agencies and more than likely we're experimenting with MK Ultra. Also, what about the mafia? The mo Also, what about other co foreign countries? Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Who knows? God Russia. knows how many are out there. You know, how many? Uh, now, um, Philip Blair says that and I thought this was right, that um, Sirhan was a, a Christian Palestinian. But he was. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Okay. No, no, no. I Well, yeah, I, I think so. But I think there's yeah. a moment where he was in Serbia. He, he could have been in Serbia, yeah. but he himself was a a Christian Palestinian, Palestinian not, yeah. not a Muslim. But he, he was playing around, remember, with the occult. And, yeah. and I, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, wasn't he involved um, with with uh, Jack Parsons' former group or, or a bunch of Crowleyans or something? Well, yeah. Well, no, I think what it was is, uh, so there's the White Fog, before the White Fog and after the White Fog. Okay. And um, so like... Uh, after the white fog, so that's the, the span of like a 12 week period of a time where his memory is completely wiped. He can't remember anything to this day. He cannot remember anything. Right. He becomes a Rosicrucian through a melon uh, sort of magazine type of thing uh, um, after the white fog. But before the white yeah. fog, uh, I think it's a uh, FBI file sh showed that he was very much into a British occult group, which is assumed to be the process church of the final judgment. That's what it was. The process church. That's what yes. I was thinking of. Yes. Sir that, you know. mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to say this. I'm not going to go too far so that I don't get in trouble, but I was for six months an evidence technician for the FBI in my mm -hmm. first year. Um, I started out at the FBI as a mail clerk. I did that for 45 days. That was just a foot in the door. And then I was promoted to evidence technician. I did that for six months while they were waiting for the counterintelligence division to process my in-house app. To, and they pulled me into that at the six-month point. But I will say this. I saw something while an evidence technician in Los Angeles, LA field office, on the RFK assassination 
that really affected my perception of Sirhan Sirhan's alleged guilt. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And the reason I'm going to leave it at that is to keep my ass out of trouble. Okay. Right. Right. Probably already said too much, you know, on that. But uh, folks, we are at the hour mark. And Todd, um, why don't you, uh, when we're done here, I'm going to keep you backstage so that we can uh, continue um, Mm -hmm. with something. And uh, Todd, um, why don't you wrap up, tell everybody, you know, again, or, uh, you know, about the links that they can go to. We are going to post oh. links in the description after mm-hmm. the show, but uh, go ahead and um, all this, give them a little the, wrap up. The majority of the source material tonight mm-hmm. comes from CavDef. The way I like to go to CavDef is I first go to Google. I type in CavDef, C-A-V-D-E-F, space, serial killers. Then you'll, you'll see the link, hit the link, go to the website. You can scroll down and find a whole list of serial killers right there. Now, anybody who is unfamiliar with CavDef, CavDef has all the source material from Dave McAllen's book, Program to Kill. Great book. Great all book. right there, every because every single source from that book is a mainstream source. Yeah. So if anybody, yeah. if you go and you start doing this research, anybody want to mess with you? Just show them the mainstream source, USA Today, New York Times, yeah. all sorts of go. stuff. There we yeah. go. Well, hey, we still have about another uh, 14 minutes for questions. I just wanted to get that data in there so that you guys don't miss the links. And like I said, afterwards, we are going to post links and stuff. So um, Telegraphic asks, Todd, how is the book coming along? Which one? Lost Future Volume 3? Uh, I, I guess that's probably what, uh, what telegraphic means. Um, yeah, I believe we have agreed to, uh, that's later in the year. That's down yeah. the road, right? That's down the road. I think, I think we're going to try and maybe do a different one just to, no. just Oh, to... he was asking, uh, Todd, I have clarification here. Something about a serial killer book. Oh, no, uh, I don't think we're doing one of those just yet, but it may be coming. We have some other things mm-hmm. that will be coming down the road before a book, yeah. and, and you'll find out about that um, soon enough. More questions. We have plenty of time for more questions and comments. And um, yeah, this would be, it would be real interesting to look at all these killers you talked about and their associates who have military backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And my gosh, if you could find a connection to, say, Michael Aquino. Colonel Aquino, right? Well, my, uh, of course, Michael Aquino is connected because Michael Aquino was the right hand man of Anton LaVey. He started the Temple right. of Set. Also, mm-hmm. he was implicated in the uh, Presidio, Presidio uh, preschool um, mm-hmm. sort of sexual molestation case. Jesus. Right? Yeah. Wow. Also, I think he was a. Uh, According to, oh, I can't remember his name right now. According to a source, he was running his own sort of MK Ultra program, his own version of a, the 80s version of Project Monarch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Rodney Stubbert says, a pen and a piece of paper is a must when I watch the channel. Well, hey, good. Uh, you know, I hope earlier uh, Red Cap was... Uh, was saying, you know, thanks for the homework. You know, you're welcome. That's the way I've always done things myself as a writer. I I don't do people's homework for them. You know, I tell them, well, go here, go there. You'll get the context. And um, mainly because, you know, Todd and I could spend another whole hour Mm -hmm. just explaining all the threads that Todd has pulled and presented up to now. Um, in explaining these things. So it is easier if you guys, you know, will go back and watch the previous episodes. Um, You know, so uh, let's see. The next one is Aaron's Energy, Aaron's Energy 313 asked, uh, any connection to the Finders? I'm not familiar with the Finders. Yes, uh, there is a, there is a connection to the Finders. I mean, all these cults are affiliated, right? They're, they're just like small cells. They, tell they, us about the finders. A larger thing. What's that? Briefly, tell us about the finders. Well, they were run, they they were caught 
uh, trying to transport kids to Mexico. Jesus. Now, these kids were pretty bad off. Uh, they, I mean, they were in, um, they were dirty and in foul condition, but the, 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 the drivers of the van who were connected to the finders cult claimed that they were going to a special school for super smart kids. Right. And oh, it boy. seems like possibly they were taking uh, the kids to Monterey, uh, to a school in Monterey. That's right. And uh, of course, Monterey is uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a big part of this network, too. There's a lot of human trafficking. Uh, there's a lot of connections to these guys to Monterey in Mexico City. Um, yeah, I, I would check out. I think the CIA may have released all their files on the Finders Cult in 2019. And those are available. Okay. I think you may have to just Google them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. D. Dorothy Papineau says, I'm more interested in the military connection since my father was Air Force till 1966. Well, yeah. And, and particularly that era, obviously, it, it sounds like he was in during the 50s. And yeah. depending upon which, uh, which command he was in, uh, he could have had some exposure to Air Force MK Ultra. Yeah. Um, uh, process um, activity I should say mm -hmm. and and I do think uh, as a shameless plug but this book here specifically talks about the Air Force MK Ultra and um, when I was an agent in the late 90s um, I was informed by someone who would know that hypnotism was used on my dad to suppress certain things he knew and was exposed to. And I was encouraged to pull this thread and, and dig this out. And I finally did in uh, 2016 with my research and investigation on this book. And of course, that's when I personally found out, you know, the, the more details about the U.S. Air Force connection with MKUltra. So um, it, it made sense. And it, it makes sense to me that um, what I was told was correct about my dad and I can only imagine how, how many other, you know, air force, you know, airmen, the air force personnel were exposed to this depending upon, you know, what their jobs were. Cause remember it was the cold war and there was a level of paranoia unprecedented in our history to that time. The book D Dorothy is shimmering light. And I believe it's at walterbosley.com. Correct, Malia? Yes. Yep. So check it out there. And um, so let's see. Let's see. Uh, we still have a few minutes for some more questions. Did you see what Carlos said? Pardon? Did you see what Carlos said? Uh, Just about D. Dorothy's. Yeah, uh, Carla Struble. Uh, with the, these aren't my reading glasses, folks, so I kind of have to <laughs> um, remember Max Spears. I think he exposed the Presidio thing. He, I, I, I don't know for sure. He might have been part of exposing the Presidio thing, but Aquino was kind of exposed, I believe, long before Max Spears' time. Because I remember, right? right. You know, I mean, that was a terrible case. Yeah. I mean, so. Those kids were, were, yeah. So, okay. So, Telegraphic asks Todd or Walter, are there any recent cult serial murders that we can trace, or is it too early to tell? Um, I, in for a lot of obvious reasons, it's too early to tell. Todd has talked about that possibility before, and it's very disturbing because remember, folks, the ones we hear about are just the ones that they've caught. Okay. Yeah, there's others out there that have never been caught. Oh, um, yeah. The Zodiac, the most famous one who hasn't been caught. But there's others that you've never even heard of that are out there doing this. Right. An example of this would be, um, I think it's Arizona. Out in the desert, they found that mass grave of like eight or nine bodies. They never caught that person, uh, whoever killed those young ladies. Um, uh, Johnny Side asked... Wasn't the Presidio just part of the 80s satanic panic? Now, for those of you who don't know what Johnny Side's referring to, there was kind of a, um, uh, uh, I don't want to say fraud, I don't want to say hoax, but there moral, was. Moral scare. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, kind of, kind of a uh, what do they call that? Urban legend level mm -hmm. of satanic panic, right? Um, that just proved to not be, you know, right. to not be and, true. And nothing, and I, like Metallica and Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah, I don't know if the Presidio uh, case um, that doesn't fall under, under that. The, that might be like a narrative to to muddy the water to try and cover up for something because you know. Yeah. There may have been other military people involved. And, and you know, it wouldn't be like military intelligence or counterintelligence at all to muddy the water, right? Right, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it I'd does highly, sound like that. I'd highly recommend looking into, uh, you know, Michael Aquino, he is a, you know, he was a Satanist. He has the, yes. the, the crazy looking eyebrows, you know. Yeah, like, very open about it, too. Yeah, yeah. He's like cat, looks, his eyebrows look like caterpillars. Um, Hold on. but yeah, I mean, there's, it, I don't necessarily think that it was a, that one was a too much of a satanic, like there was some ritual abuse happening, but, uh, that one, I, I, I think that was, that one was a legit one, right? Because the problem with the 1980s is you can, you can yell satanic panic all you want yeah. until you get to Adolfo Costanzo until you get to Juarez, Mexico. Right, yeah. the, there the, is more the iron. orders in 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 Latin America than than exactly. in the United States. Yeah, the irony of of just brushing everything off like some people do, mm -hmm. um, uh, under the oh, it's just satanic panic. The irony is, is that there really was satanic, you know, mm -hmm. crimes going on. You know, there were. Right. Um, okay, we have uh, Nathan Etzel asks. Is the network authentic in its practices, or is Satanism just being used for? mk ultra conditioning i think it's well, both but what do you think todd i think it's too vast that i think mm -hmm. that the the satanic uh the, the, well okay in mk ultra the, the the satanic cult was used um to sort of cover up the mk ultra program according to dave mcallen's book read the introduction of program yep. to kill that's yep. what he said excellent said. book excellent um, book but i don't think everyone involved necessarily is a satanist in the right. network, right? Because right. Satanism, again, Satanism is really just, they're not worshiping uh, Satan. They're, they're just, they're basically atheist, mm -hmm. mocking yeah. God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. remember the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making you think he didn't exist. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Go back and watch the usual suspects again. There you go. Uh, there you go. Because yeah, I mean, it, it's a huge criminal enterprise. I would say with Satanist in it. Exactly. Exactly. And the next comment is referring to ley lines in serial killers, which, um, you know, I, I've got a hand in uh, that discussion because in this book, the first Empire of the Wheel book, Rick Spence and I, we present, um, I think, more than one chapter, but a primary chapter on. Um, showing through Sachery's analysis, geomorphological and and um, topographical map analysis, that uh, the Zodiac Killer was certainly attacking his victims or their victims, because we think it's the Zodiac Killers, um, on Tulert Currents. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also argued in the third book in this series, The Nameless Ones, that the McStay family, um, again, according to Sessary's analysis, which, by the way, a map he provided me long before the McStays were found buried at the intersection of where a major ley line um, splits into three. Remember, three being the number of Hecate. Um, uh, I had this map before the McStay bodies were found there. And where their bodies were found is at this exact point. So with the McStay murders, um, look that up. Uh, their bodies were at least buried at the Tulare Current. They might have been killed right there in that spot and buried um, also. So ley lines and serial killers. Yeah, I I definitely think that that's going on. Let's go yeah. down here to the. We got time for just a couple more. Um, Philip Blair says Kenya recently had a horrific death cult flash into the world headlines. Ooh, we'll have to look that yeah. up. D. Dorothy Papineau, the lake in Austin, Texas, has been washing up bodies. Yikes. You mean yeah. during all this flooding? Boy, that would be 
Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I, I wonder if that maybe ha has a connection to our friend William Ramsey's research with the smiley face killers. Oh, good point. Good point. Because water um, has to do that. Oh, hey, Griffin Eagle 7 asks, uh, can he follow Todd anywhere with, with your research? Uh, pr this is primarily where, we, this where is you it. report this. I, yeah. I don't do social media. I, I, I hate social media. I just, do, I just do this right here. Okay. What's that? The Bosleyverse. Oh, yeah. yeah. Malia says only in the Bosleyverse. Only in the Bosleyverse. <laughs> So Ryan Perella or Perea, however I'm pronouncing that, uh, Walter, I need a brief, a brief on Hecate, please. Oh boy, um, <laughs> Hecate. Oh boy, Hecate is the queen of the crossroads in the afterlife. She's the go a goddess of the underworld. Um, she is also a um, an aspect of well, Isis. Uh, the, the the goddess veiled Isis is just an Egyptian uh, vernacular of Hecate. Um, she's one of the Chthonic gods, and uh, boy oh boy, Empire of the Wheel. This is what introduced me to Hecate. Is this big research and. Um, that's a whole, it, it, it's impossible to just give you a brief, Ryan. That's a, that's a lengthy, right. lengthy discussion, you know, on Hecate. So let's see what we got here. Oh, you know what? Let's see. Uh, Johnny side. Yes, it's true. LaVey Satanism is just atheism with rituals, right? Like we were saying earlier, just theatrical. Right, um, right, right. And I think uh, that what was going on in Washington state was just that they, 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 but the, the killing part was real. Yeah. 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 So, so hey, but the, it doesn't matter that the psychological effects are the same. The sense of empowerment sure. is the same. So, yeah. I mean, again, the de the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making you think he doesn't exist. That's Even right. if they're doing it ironically, they're still doing it. Yeah. 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 Well, let me fit these. Let me run through these real quick. Ryan Prellis asks, is Hecate Lady Gaga? Who knows? Who knows? D. Dorothy was the place Seshery had his accident on a telluric line. I don't know. We'll have to ask him. You know, what's funny. I've never, of all the things I've never asked Sesh if when he was hit by the car, if it was on a ley line that that's interesting. Uh, yes. Um, Olive Eisner. That's true. Everybody, please go to check out DJ's, uh, shows, um, you know, on the RFK assassination, the various Kennedy assassination milieus, but he does one particularly on Sirhan Sirhan and you'll get a lot of good, um, information there. Uh, Rodney Stubbert says, I noticed that Todd is pretty much a ghost. Todd, you're a ghost. I am a ghost. Yeah. Uh, Johnny That's side. I after, like it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, after LaVey's death, the church of Satan is now just a Twitter account. <laughs> That's yeah. good. That's good. Um, well, there's the, there's the, the satanic temple. They kind of picked up the. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And Renee, Miss Johnny side, Lake Eisenhower had bodies being found when the drought, during the drought, any connections? I, I don't know. I'm not where, where is Lake Eisenhower? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either, but, um, Ryan Perella says, awesome show. Thank you. And, um, well, I think that's it. I think that's what we got time for, uh, tonight. It really zoomed by. And yeah. I want to thank everybody in the, the live chat for the great questions. Renee, Mrs. Johnny Sites says Lake Eisenhower's in California. You know what, Todd? Look that up and see what you can find about Lake Eisenhower. Yeah. Well, and, uh, um, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for coming out and, and watching us. We appreciate you so much. And uh, yep. I'm just so honored. I'm so honored to be on this show and, and to, to, to have such great viewers and anybody who's new, who's interested in keeping up with what we're doing, please hit the like and the subscribe. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, thank you uh, for the for the super chat and folks. Thank you very much for the generosity on those. And um, Johnny Side says we need more Todd Wood, California episodes. You're about to get more of Todd Wood, California We'll announce that in the future. So, uh, okay. So, Todd, I'm going to have you uh, hang out in, in the uh, studio. Thanks again for this uh, another great live episode. 
and um, just hang tight in the uh, in the green room, as it were, and I'll be right back with you. So, okay, folks, um, thanks again so much. We had a good turnout, really good turnout, lots of good questions. Um, these episodes are always popular. And, um, you know, thanks again, everybody. And uh, Malia and I will see you on Saturday. And oh, really uh, quickly, what's that? Um, One Carla last has thing. A quick question. What? Carla has a quick question. And what is that? And I just want to address it because okay. we had a Son of Sam uh -huh. episode with Todd, which really yes, goes we did. into that. Yes, the Son of Sam so episode that out. Todd did. Uh, go back through the California episodes. And you know what? Your idea, we're going to do a playlist, folks, a California playlist that you can go right to these episodes. We'll get that done ASAP. And uh, believe me, any questions you have about what Todd's covered in the past, you'll be able to find it in that playlist. And we take suggestions. We're always, you know, we tell Todd, hey, here's a suggestion. And he loves that. So uh, anyway, thanks again, everybody. And um, we'll uh, hopefully see uh, all of you on Saturday. So have a good night.